Hello, I'm Kevin Houston, and I want to talk about trigonometric identities. So there are a lot of trigonometric identities, and in this video, I'll assume that you've already met many of them and are fairly comfortable using them. What I want to show is that most of them can be deduced from just three equations and the basic definitions of the trigonometric functions. This saves us having to remember them all. There are three key identities to remember. First of all, very important one this, it's sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Next, we have sine a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And the last one is cosine a plus b equals cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So those last two are called the addition formulae. We also need the basic definitions. So cosec is 1 over sine x, sec x is 1 over cos x, and cot x is 1 over tan x. Now, some people find these a bit hard to remember. The way I remember them is that cot and tan both have a T in them, so they go together. The hard one, of course, or the hard pair, is the uh, cosec and the sec, which one's which. Um, I always remember this by saying that cosec starts with a co and cosine starts with a co, and those are the ones which don't match. So I always think these cosec and uh, sec, they're actually the wrong way around. I always think that they're, that they're like that. It would be so much better if cosec went with cosine, but it doesn't, and that's the way I remember it, in the fact that they don't go together. So cosec goes with sine, and sec goes with cosine. Okay, so let's have a look at that fundamental equation, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. This equation is the only equation involving sine x and cosine x that we have to remember. It actually follows from Pythagoras' theorem. So if we take a right angle triangle, and we label up uh, the angle x, and we have the opposite, the hypotenuse, and the adjacent, then with such a triangle, the definitions of sine and cosine are sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so we take sine squared x plus cosine squared x, what's that? Well, that's opposite over hypotenuse squared plus adjacent over hypotenuse squared. Okay, so that's O squared over H squared plus A squared over H squared. And taking a common denominator, we end up with O squared plus A squared on top uh, and then H squared on the bottom. So you'll notice that O squared plus A squared, well, we know from Pythagoras' theorem that that should be H squared. Okay, so we end up with H squared over H squared. And that, of course, has to be equal to 1. So that's why that equation is true. Now, there are other identities um, such as 1 plus tan squared x equals sec squared x and 1 plus cot squared x equals cosine squared x. Now, we don't actually have to remember these. We're mathematicians. We can just work them out. So let's take the first one. 1 plus tan squared x equals sec squared x. Let's say that we couldn't remember this equation so that we didn't really know what, what it was, but we just knew we had to get the identity involving tan. Well, the definition of tan is tan x equals sine x over cos x. So we have division by cosine. Um, so let's take the only sine and cosine equation that we have to remember and divide that by cosine squared x. You know, it's because we want tan squared x, not just tan x. So we'll need to divide by cosine squared x. Okay, so let's do that. We have sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And then divide through by cosine squared x, we end up with sine squared x over cosine squared x. So that's going to turn into tan squared x. And then we have cosine squared x over cosine squared x. Great, that's going to go to uh, b1. And then 1 over cosine squared x. Well, if, if we just write that out uh, with, the, with the squares like that and cancel the cosine squared x's, then you, you can see that we end up with tan x all squared plus 1 over, well, 1 over cos x is sec x, right? So that we're squaring that one as well. And there we go. We end up with the equation we wanted. Tan squared x plus 1 equals sec squared x. So if you ever want to work out what's the equation involving tan, uh, that's how you do it. Um, but let's say that you wanted the equation involving sec, and you know, this, this is the same one, and, and we couldn't, you know, let's just say we couldn't quite remember uh, what it was, but we knew that we had to find one involving sec, then we go through a similar sort of procedure. We just observe that sec x is the reciprocal of cos x, 
And so we take our equation involving sine and cos, right? That's the only one we need to remember. And we divide by cos squared x. It is now easy to see that if we want the equation involving cosec, that is 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x, then since cosec is the reciprocal of sine, we should divide our memorized equation by sine squared x. Similarly, if we know we need the equation involving cot, then it's only slightly harder. We have the cotangent of x is 1 over tan x, and that's equal to 1 over sine x over cos x. So we can turn that around and we end up with cos x over sine x. So in other words, we need to be dividing our fundamental equation by sine squared x. So there are the uh, two ways of getting the equation 1 plus cot x squared equals cosec x squared. Now let's go to the addition formula. There are four addition formulae, as you can see there, sine a plus b, sine a minus b, cosine a plus b, and cosine a minus b. What kind of mathematician memorizes four formulae? Let's immediately cut that down to two. To get sine a minus b, we just note that a minus b is a plus minus b. And so, sine a minus b equals sine a plus minus b. And we can use the sine addition formula that we saw on the previous page. Just there, sine a plus b equals sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So we get sine a cos minus b plus cos a sine minus b. Now we can get rid of the minus signs uh, in the, the minus sign in the first one because cos of minus b is equal to cos b. You can see this on the, the graph of cosine. Uh, and similarly, sine of minus b is actually equal to minus sine b. Again, you can see it on the, uh, the graphs. Okay. So as an exercise, you deduce the formula for cosine a minus b from the formula for cosine a plus b. So we've cut down the number of equations uh, needed to two.